All right, it's 2.15. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our uh, virtual news conference here for the city of Grand Forks. Um, media members who are on the line, uh, as we, unfortunately, we've gotten really used to this, but uh, uh, please use the hand raising feature to uh, let me know that you have a question and I'll get to it um, after comments from our panelists. And uh, we'll, we'll get going right now. We'll start with uh, Mayor Brown. Mayor Brown, go ahead. Thank you, John. So today for the Grand Forks Virtual News Conference, Monday, April 20th, 2020, uh, we'll have an opening statement followed by remarks by Debbie Swanson, Director of Grand Forks Public Health and Dr. Joshua Deere with All True Health System. Then we'll have a question and answer period and then a closing statement. So I wanna say good afternoon and thank you all for staying informed. These are extraordinary times in Grand Forks and we've been identified as a hotspot in our region. The health of our friends and neighbors depends on all of us following the guidelines, acting responsibly, and taking this seriously. This virus is much more contagious and severe than seasonal flu and threatens the health and well-being of our elderly population and those with pre-existing conditions. There is no vaccine or drug that is available at this time. Our goal is to slow the transmission of the disease to protect our residents at increased risk and avoid overrunning our health care capacity. As many have been following closely, there are a high number of cases associated with LM Wind Power employees and their close contact. The following is the timeline of the events to this day. April 15th, there were several confirmed cases associated with LM Wind Power employees. On this day, LM Wind Power announced they were suspending production until further notice. April 16th, the state of North Dakota Rapid Response Team in conjunction with local officials conducted drive-through testing for 426 individuals, a combination of employees showing symptoms, close contacts, and a random sample of LM employees were tested. April 18th, 110 positive cases were identified relating to LM wind power between the drive-through testing event conducted by the rapid response team and a sample of other tests conducted by local health organizations. As a result, the state health officer issued an executive order for LM Wind Power employees to quarantine for 14 days starting April 16th, the last day of contact. April 20th, a total of 128 people have been confirmed positive, 11 of those being Minnesota residents. We're hoping to avoid an outbreak like the one at LM Wind Power, but in partnership with the state of North Dakota, we were able to swiftly identify and isolate the cases of COVID-19 in a very short amount of time. I strongly encourage everyone to, and all small businesses and box stores, manufacturing facilities, and other businesses to abide by the CD guidelines and take all necessary measures to ensure the safety of your employees and customers. We have a long road ahead, and we as citizens of Grand Forks need to take responsibility for this great community and stay home to protect our residents who are at increased risk. Stay home and only go out for essential trips. Cover your face and frequently wash your hands. Stay home, slow the spread, and save lives. We're in this together, we'll get through this together, and together we'll emerge stronger. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And we'll go next to Deb Swanson from Grand Forks Public Health. Go ahead, Deb. Thank you, John, and thank you, Mayor Brown, for the opportunity to address our audience and the media again today. As Mayor Brown mentioned, as part of our targeted testing event at LM Wind Power, 426 tests were performed on Thursday, April 16th. At that time, 99 of those tests were positive and 323 were negative. Four tests were not able to be run, and of those 99 positive, 72 of them are LM employees, and 19 are still under investigation. Eight are not employees of LM Wind Power. There were also 29 tests associated with LM Wind Power from other clinics that uh, Dr. Brown mentioned. So the total number is 128 associated with this work site. 11 of those individuals are residents of Minnesota and our colleagues in Minnesota will be following up uh, with contact investigation in Minnesota counties. Our role at Grand Forks Public Health Department has always been to provide public education to the residents of Grand Forks County about the risks of COVID-19. And it's to ensure that everyone has the resources they need to be healthy and safe from this disease. We've made information available on our website, the city website, the North Dakota Department of Health website, the CDC, all social media platforms, and through our hotline that we answer. 
Our partners at All True Health System have also set up hotline and have initiated a number of other activities to address COVID-19. The primary focus of our work right now is containing the spread. We really wanna contain the spread of COVID-19 in our community since we now know we have a large number of cases that tested positive. We're doing this through our work with contract tracing, investigation of all the contacts and applying the quarantine orders to those who are at risk of disease. Isolation is what's recommended for those who have tested positive, And that means staying home, isolating from other household members and reaching out to let us know what needs individuals might have. We'll be posting information about how to get resources to help those families that might be in need as a result of a quarantine or isolation order. For the general public, we still recommend all the things that Mayor Brown mentioned earlier. And one additional thing that I'd like to mention is that wearing a mask when you go outside to conduct your essential business activities is recommended. If you think about it this way, my mask protects you and your mask protects me. We can go a long ways to preventing the spread of disease in the community and we can destigmatize this disease as well as the wearing of masks. Coronavirus is highly transmissible. It can cause serious disease and we don't have a vaccine to protect us from it yet. So our population is largely at risk. We're all susceptible to this virus and the disease it causes. And it's ever more important that everyone abide by the guidelines that we've been recommending. We know it's hard, we know it's been difficult, um, but we also know that we're up to the challenge and this is what's going to be really important to protect health in the days ahead. Thank you, Dr. Deer. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Brown and Debbie. Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Josh Deer, Medical Director of Primary Care at Altru. On behalf of Altru, I'd like to thank the state and local public health for their strong, swift response in addressing the cluster of positive cases late last week. Their screening event and ongoing management of this situation has been proactive and will help protect our community health care resources. At Altru, we continue to screen those concerned they are at risk. With over 6,800 calls to our hotline to date, we've tested 1,800 plus people as of this morning with 51 positive results. It is important to understand that testing is best suited for those presenting with symptoms. Those without symptoms may not be shedding enough virus early in the disease. This may lead to a negative test, yet these individuals could develop symptoms shortly after. This is why we recommend quarantine, as you've heard everyone discuss so far on this panel, after exposure and testing of those who are symptomatic. As our cases increase in Grand Forks, we want to assure you that Altria has solid plans in place for potential surge in patients. This plan includes a tiered approach that can accommodate up to 293 beds and 33 ICU beds. We have 88 ventilators. Given the model we have available today, Altru can confidently care for the current positive cases in our area. If we look at the most recent models of severity of disease from the CDC, about 80% will experience mild symptoms or simply recover at home. Only 5% of patients should require critical care and potential need of a ventilator. The important step now is stopping the spread from continuing. Practicing isolation and quarantine procedures when directed and physically distancing for all. Our community must take these steps seriously to ensure we stop the spread of this disease so we can manage it well. Thank you members of the media for your assistance in sharing this important information to our community. Thank you, Dr. Deer. John, I guess we're ready for question and answer period now. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. Our first question comes from uh, Mr. Neil Carlson with iNews. Go ahead, Neil. Uh, the questions, I guess, for the uh, mayor and uh, Debbie Swanson of the health department. I've been talking with attorney David uh, Thompson, who's been uh, interviewing employees at LM Health. Uh, some of employee or employees who have said that the mayor's office and health department were notified as early as mid-March that there were uh, possible COVID problems at the plant. Um, can you respond to uh, if you received that notification, what, if anything, was done at that time when you received that information? Well, thank you. On Sunday evening, March 22nd, 2020, the Grand Forks Public Information Center received an email from an individual identifying themselves as an employee of LM Wind Power expressing concern about the physical distancing at the Grand Forks facility. The email was distributed to the mayor's office and the Grand Forks Public Health Department. 
On Monday morning, March 23rd, 2020, the mayor's office advised the public health department that it would respond to the concerns. Grand Forks Region Economic Development Corporation President and CEO Keith Lund made contact with plant management on behalf of the city, explaining the concerns had been received from LN Wind Power employees regarding lack of physical distancing at the plant, and to confirm that LN Wind Power was taking appropriate precautions in accordance with the city's recommendations. The Public Health Department received a call on March 23rd, 2020 from another individual identifying themselves as an employee of LN Wind Power, expressing similar concerns. The caller was advised that the mayor's office is aware of the prior communication from the LN Wind Power employee and that the mayor's office was following up on these concerns. On March 24, 2020, Keith Lund, on behalf of the mayor's office, advised senior representative Ellen Wind Power of the concerns again expressed in the email and was assured that Ellen Wind Power was taking the necessary and appropriate precautions in accordance with the CDC's recommendations. Throughout this pandemic, the city continued to provide consistent information to the public to follow the CDC guidelines regarding CDC recommendations and including the need for physical distancing. The CDC guidelines apply to employers and employees alike. As the coronavirus moves into our region, the CDC guidelines are now more important than ever. During the evening of Tuesday, April 14th, the City of Grand Forks was made aware of the North Dakota State Department that several employees at Ellen Wind Power tested positive for COVID-19. In collaboration with the State Health Department and North Dakota National Guard, a targeted testing event occurred at Ellen Wind Power, leading to the identification of a large number of employees testing positive for COVID-19. And they immediately shut down the plant which is a key to stopping the spread. And now their employees are home and they're being paid by Ellen Wind Power. Yes, Mr. Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if, if a question here by Mr. Joe Bowen from the Grand Forks Herald. Go ahead, Joe. Mr. Bowen. Hey, so uh, the email you guys got on the 22nd and the phone call on the 23rd, what did those complaints about what was going on at LM, what did they entail? Like, well, what did they say wasn't happening that should be? You'll get those, I'm sure, under the Freedom of Information Act. But um, they- That's for federal records. Okay, but they stated that the, uh, there was a lack of compliance with physical, they were concerned about the physical distancing compliance. Okay, a uh, question by Mr. Ken Chase. Go ahead, Ken. Oh, it's actually Matt Henson using oh, Ken. Oh, Matt Henson. Okay, you signed in under Ken. Go ahead. Yes, <laughs> sorry. I just fired up Ken's computer as soon as I got into the office. We haven't changed it. So when was the first case at LM Wind Power actually discovered? We understand that LM said they first learned last Tuesday, but so did all eight or nine cases come up on the same day or when was the first case actually discovered? Mayor Brown, I can take that question. This is Debbie Swanson. Yes, we were first informed on April 14th, that was a Tuesday, that through the process of our contact tracing, when we received cases, that it was revealed that a number of them all worked at the same workplace. So it was April 14th. Thank you, Deb. Uh, next question comes from Ryan Cunningham. He's having some microphone issues, so he texted it to me. Uh, this is for Mayor Brown. Um, are you, were you satisfied with the appropriate, that the appropriate steps were followed based on the information reported back from Keith Lund regarding LM Wind Power? Uh, Mayor, let me uh, unmute you. Go ahead, Mayor. I'll do it. Yes, I was satisfied. Okay, that answers that. A uh, question from Sydney Mook from the Grand Forks Herald. Go ahead, Sydney. Oh, there we go. Um, so we've learned that there might have been some uh, employees at LM Wind that they weren't apparently quarantining themselves for 14 days after returning back from vacation. Do you guys know uh, anything about that? I don't have any information about that. No, neither do I. Okay, uh, next question, Mr. Neil Carlson. Go ahead, Neil. that Keith Lund was notified. I'm, I'm sorry, Neil, can you start your question over? You, you were still muted. Oh, okay, uh, sorry, a follow-up, uh, Mayor, to the email uh, of the complaint or whatever you received uh, regarding uh, LM. You said that was uh, passed on to Keith Lund, but I'm just wondering, 
Uh, did anyone ever check to see if LM was actually following social distancing and stuff at that time after you told Keith Lund about it? No. Do you have any information on that? Because we as a city, I, we communicate to them and they said, yes, we're following, we're in compliance. So, so basically... This is Debbie Swanson of the health department. Uh, we do not do inspections of various businesses and industries. When we hear about concerns, we certainly try to follow up to the best of our ability, but was a physical inspection made of this particular plant? No. Okay, uh, question by Mr. Joel Bowen. Go ahead, Joel. So to clarify then, Two different employees said, hey, we're worried about social distancing measures here. You guys had the head of the Economic Development Corporation go and ask them if they were. He was assured they were, and that was the end of it then? I want to make sure I understand kind of that timeline in a nutshell here. Yes, they stated they were in compliance with, with the physical distancing requirements of the CDC and following the other recommendations as well. So did you guys verify that at all? I mean, like, I guess you don't do inspections, but did they take out a tour, anything like that, or is it just... How did they tell you or show you that they were they, compliance? Well, they verbally committed to it. A uh, question from Sydney Mook. Go ahead, Sydney. Hey, I, I know that we are, uh, you guys are looking at trying to do uh, more testing, kind of maybe another testing event like we did, that you guys did last week. Um, do we know any more additional details on that, if that'll be happening uh, this week at all? Deb, can you help? The testing event that was uh, conducted last week was determined to be necessary by the North Dakota Department of Health. Since the, that time that testing has been done, all employees have been quarantined. We made that decision to do that based on the resources that were available. And in all honesty, the National Guard covers the entire state of North Dakota and the health department, the state health department is in charge of supplying testing kits to the entire state of North Dakota. So those decisions on future testing will really be determined by those two entities. They came to Grand Forks, uh, they offered their assistance as part of our health department. Uh, the decisions will be largely based on the epidemiology of the disease over the next few days in our community. And it would seem that maybe an inspection and enforcement may be a gap in the system that we need to address. Thank you, Mayor. Next question from Mr. Chris Larson. Go ahead, Chris. Thank you, John. I, I guess, Mayor, you may have just answered my question, but when you guys look at, at inspector things like this in the future, um, are you going to maybe ramp up your um, inspections, so to say? I think I think that's a very logical next step because we need to ensure that there's compliance with our directives. But um, in this case, I think, it, you know, inspection and enforcement would be the next step. Thank and you, Mayor. If, oh, I'm sorry, could, Deb, go ahead. I would like to add a little something to what Mayor Brown said, and that is uh, workplace safety as an occupational uh, safety mm. uh, True. activity done by OSHA. And so OSHA determines how employees are safe in the workplace. So all OSHA rules would apply. And we haven't dealt with the pandemic before. So um, understandably, there are a lot of issues to work through. But we have stepped up some efforts that I think the public should know about to ensure that businesses are doing what they need to do. And through our partnership with Altru, they have a workplace solutions, employer solutions uh, unit. And they, are, they did initially reach out to all of their contracts and now they are going to reach out to all businesses in the community with additional information about ensuring that employers keep their employees safe, that they use all the practices that are recommended by the Centers for Disease Control to keep people safe. So we will definitely uh, increase our efforts, but workplace inspections are really uh, the purview of OSHA. Okay. Thank you, Deb. Uh, next question from Mr. Ryan Cunningham. Looks like we have our tech issues worked out. Go ahead, Ryan. We have them worked out. Let's hope that this works. Uh, but I, the I question got you, Ryan. You're for good. Mayor Brown and then good. Okay. So the question would be for Mayor Brown and Deb Swanson. And Deb, you just mentioned that OSHA would handle the workplace safety issues. However, 
We have emergency powers that have been granted the mayor's office in the city. Would those emergency powers not cover a situation like an inspection based on COVID-19? I think that would be a question for the city attorney. Okay, uh, next question. Okay, okay, so just a quick, a quick follow-up if I can. A quick follow-up if I can. So let me get this straight. We're not aware at this point, we, we'd have to go to the city attorney to find out whether or not that hasn't been researched at this point as to how to make sure workplaces are in compliance. She said that OSHA would be the one who deals with workplace safety and we'd have to see how this works out in the scheme of things and what powers I have in my office and versus the powers that Department of Public Health has versus where OSHA's jobs lie. Okay, uh, next question from Mr. Matt Henson. Go ahead, Matt. Oh. OSHA ever made aware of the complaints? Did you guys forward anything? And then I guess my follow-up question would be to that. Do you feel then that they were following social distancing guidelines based on the results that we have now? Is that an indication that they weren't following? This is a highly contagious disease and doing everything right. We, we're still going to see outbreaks in various manufacturing facilities. So that's why we're getting the word out even more strongly about how important it is to use those safe CDC recommendations to stay safe. So yes, I think they, you can still follow them and still be infected. And that's why it's so important when you go out, if you have to touch something, make sure you have a way to clean your hands, wash your hands when you get home, don't touch your face. And when you go get gas, you need to have a protocol. So you touch things that are clean. And when you touch things you're not sure of, you can be clean before you get back in your car. So no, I, th I think yes. And I, from the emails I read that OSHA was contacted, but I don't know what came of that. Thank you, Mayor. Next question from Mr. Joel Bowen. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, so have you guys received any complaints that are similar to the two you got late last month about other businesses in Grand Forks? I have not. Okay, uh, next question, Mr. Neil Carlson. Um, a lot of messages from viewers, uh, some complaining about businesses not following guidelines, but the biggest complaint is, uh, what was it? Oh, especially yesterday, uh, one of the basketball courts in town, well, oh, there's 40 kids uh, playing hoops together. So are police gonna go around and say disperse, or is this kind of up to the parents and families to have some discretion here? And no, no I think People need to let us know so that we can act on that because that type of activity is extremely dangerous in our communities. We see how highly contagious it is and we need to avoid those type of interactions. And I'm sure the basketball hoops will be coming down to discourage that type of interaction. Thank you. Uh, we got time for two more here. First, we'll go to uh, Sydney with the Grand Forks Herald. Go ahead. Hi. So we also have a, a positive case that was out at the, the mill and Grand Forks has a lot of manufacturing facilities um, in the city and, and around the city. I'm just curious if there's any um, extra protocols that you were asking manufacturers to consider uh, during this time. Well, I think prompt notification and prompt action. So like when the North Dakota Mill uh, had their case and they immediately, I think, shut down, closed for the weekend, did cleaning, isolated the contacts of this person involved. So I think immediate action is required and that's, that's the best strategy to containing COVID-19. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Joel Bowen. So this is a community question that I wanna make sure I get in here. Um, if I hypothetically live with an employee of LM and both of us have tested negative, can I or should I, the non-LM employee, go to my job? No. Is that okay to do? No, no, no. If you're early in the disease stage, as Dr. Deere stated earlier, your viral test won't be positive, but you'll still be growing the virus. So it's absolutely follow the guidelines. You stay home for 14 days because then if you develop the disease, you haven't been asymptomatically spreading it throughout the community. Is that right, Dr. Deere? He nods his head yes. Is that right, Debbie Swanson? She nods her head yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, that, that was the end of our Q&A. Uh, we will, uh, uh, from the media, thank you for oh. participating. And uh, Mayor Brown, if you could uh, send us home here today, sir. Yep, again, we have a long road ahead of us. And we as citizens of Grand Forks need to take responsibility for this great community and stay home to protect our residents who are at risk. 
stay home, only go out for essential trips, cover your face, wash your hands, stay home, slow the spread, save lives. Again, we're in this together, we'll get through this together, and together we'll emerge stronger. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for all who participated, both panelists and uh, members of the media. Thank you very much. And uh, Governor's News Conference uh, coming up here at 3.30. Uh, good afternoon, everyone.